Every now and then you see something that really takes your breath away, a kind of miracle, and this is one of them. Just try to imagine a computer that can read your mind. It's not some wild fantasy. I've tested it, and to my astonishment, it works. The computer knew exactly what I was thinking. But that's just the beginning. This new technology can mean a whole new life for those suffering from locked-in syndrome, people trapped in their own bodies who can't move or say a word. I've seen them actually write emails, send texts, and even speak using nothing but their thoughts. Take a listen to this. What you're hearing is the human brain talking. That crackling is uh, the, the sound of the, the neuron popping. Brain waves communicating with a computer, telling it what to do next. Basically, we connect the brain to the computer and you can operate a computer only using your thoughts. It's 21st century mind reading, medical science that's giving a voice to those who cannot speak, I can work independently. Open. And even movement to lifeless limbs. Open. As I was about to discover, in this new age of neurotechnology, almost anything is possible. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, Joshua. Hello. For people like Marie-Therese Kahn, this new science could change their world. At 35, Marie-Therese had just given birth to her third son. Only months later, she suffered a massive stroke. Even though her intelligence and memory remain, she can only communicate through blinking. One, two, H, children. One, Every two, word three, must be painstakingly eight, spelled eight, out, three, letter eight, by letter. I, one. Marie Therese, can you describe what it's like to be locked in? One, two, three, four, five. T, V, one, two, three, A, E, one, two, three, four. R, very, one, B, C, D, F, B, W, X, Y. Annoying. She says it's frustrating and sometimes annoying. That's an understatement. <laughs> Murray Therese's eldest son, Luke, was six when his mum suffered her stroke. Luke, I think you've said that you've tried to understand what it must be like for your mum. A lot of times, before I go to sleep, I think this is what mum goes through and she doesn't get up. And, and you do kind of imagine yourself in that position and would you smile? Um, well, she, she smiles and laughs more than I do. What would it mean to your life to be given back your voice. A, E, one, two, three, four, five, T, V, W, Y, everything. That's it, yeah. easy, everything. But there is some good news. Hope for Marie Therese and the thousands of people like her. A chance of restoring her independence, releasing her from her locked in state. Here in America, half a world away from Dubbo, scientists are making some extraordinary discoveries. They've developed technology that allows computers to read minds. And for those who've had to live in silence, this technology is proving to be simply astounding. People like Scott Mackler. This is how Scott starts his day. Yeah. Yes. Um, Though completely immobilised and unable to speak, Scott has gained the ability to communicate through thought. Not only that, incredibly, he's resumed his job as a neuroscientist at Pennsylvania University. How has the ability to communicate independently changed your life? I am independently organising my research. If I couldn't work, how could I survive? We are in the enviable position of loving our jobs. It's called BCI, Brain Computer Interface Technology. In short, a cap that records brain signals. 
Scott can spell out words just by thinking of them. I can work independently. The computer gives them a voice. It gave him his independence back. He was getting so frustrated. So him having his independence back, especially for his work, it made him happy again. So what drives you, Scott? My family and work. In that order? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Scott was once a fitness fanatic who loved running marathons. A family man, married to Lynn with two sons. Here we are. Here I am with my beautiful wife on Mother's Day. Nine years ago, Scott was struck down by Lou Gehrig's disease, a devastating illness that attacks the central nervous system. And I love you very much, and I'll see you. Within months, Scott was totally locked in, his sharp mind trapped inside a paralysed body. So you're excited about this next couple of days? Unable to speak until this remarkable technology came along. Do you know where we're going? Beautiful. It's just to keep the... Mm -hmm. You're being very helpful, thank you. <laughs> Been to the hairdressers many times. Uh -huh. It seems miraculous. So how does it work? And will it work for me? I'm going to slide this just a little bit forward. I'm going to find out if a computer can read my mind. If it helps, I didn't particularly feel that. It... Oh, that's good. So, well, Tiny sensors inside the cap I'm wearing will hopefully enable the computer to recognize my thoughts. So that's a flash, flash, flash. I intend to spell out a word that only I know. The word miracle. I'm nervous for the computer. Letters flash up on the screen. I concentrate on the letter I want. The computer is supposed to read the electrical signals coming from my brain, telling it which letter I'm choosing. And amazingly, it does. <laughs> Fabulous. That's something, isn't it? <laughs> that is a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, my heart starts beating when it's, you know, it's coming up and it's like, yes, yes, yes. That's incredible. One of the big issues is that it can restore a measure of independence. The channel cast of the Lima connectors. Yeah. Uh, right. Professor John Walpau has been developing this mind reading technology for nearly 20 years. Do you recall the first time you saw your technology working for someone? It was neat getting the first email from our patient in Philadelphia to say, boy, he really wrote this. You know, he did this, he wrote this, it actually worked. You know, we finally helped somebody, you know, after all this work. So, um, yeah, that was neat. That patient was Scott Mackler who, five years on, has embraced his new world of communication. There it is. Very good. Will you email us the link? I can do that. <laughs> BCI technology offers so much hope, but what more would you like it to offer to people who are locked in? The ability to control a mouse and move prosthetic limbs. So as a a lot of trial and error, a lot of engineering development. And, and that's then, already yeah, happening. In Pittsburgh, Professor Andy Schwartz has implanted microchips into the brains of monkeys to interpret their brain signals. Using that information, a computer makes a robotic arm do what the monkey wants. In this case, we hold a marshmallow out, the monkey directs this robot arm, closes the grip around the marshmallow and brings it to its face so that it can eat. And you're basically making it happen by thinking about it. Right. Next, I'm going to paint a circle. In Providence, Rhode Island, scientists are taking it one step further, placing the implants into human brains. That's the best circle I can do. Professor John Donahue has developed what's called BrainGate, 
A sensor smaller than a contact lens is placed on the part of the brain that is responsible for movement. It is decoding the language of the brain. That's exactly what we call it, decoding the brain. The sensor records electrical signals from the brain and a computer puts them into action. And soon the whole system will become a whole lot smaller. Here's a prototype of a device that's being developed where it has the same kind of tiny sensor that's in the brain and then the signals are fed up to this little wafer of electronics that goes under the skin. It's not unlike a cochlear implant. It's very much like a cochlear implant. Next we're going to turn on my television. The television is on. Already BrainGate has enabled users to control a computer mouse. Can you make it go forward? Move a wheelchair. I'm going to close the hand. And even a robotic hand. Again, just by thinking about it. Not bad, man. Not bad at all. I think the next step, and something we're actually working on, is to recreate a physical nervous system, a bridge from the brain back to the body. That is such a paparazzi camera. <laughs> For Mari Therese Khan, such technology could finally reopen her world. What the release of this CD means to mum and our family, words will never be able to describe. Not that being locked in for 14 years has held her back. Tonight, she's releasing a CD of music based on her poetry, all of which she's had to communicate through blinking. I don't think I'd have the understanding of some of life's more perplexing matters than I do uh, having been around someone like Mum. Because that's one of the first things people think, that if I was like that, life wouldn't be worth living. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she's <laughs> gone completely against that. She's, she's made life worth living more than, than anyone I can think of. Four, five, T, H, <laughs> thank you. When this latest incredible technology is fully developed, you can only imagine what else Murray Therese could achieve. The fantasy is that one day you're playing basketball and the person with you said, oh, two years ago I had a terrible car crash, I had a spinal cord injury, but, but now I'm fine. Now I'm able to play basketball. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.